Oh, what's at the door now? Okay, let's open it. Hello. Please leave the parcel on the floor. Thank you for delivering to us. Have a great day. Hey guys, it's Gio from Smart Home Makers. I hope you enjoyed that little clip. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can combine smart home devices all together so that you never miss a parcel again. Now, I know that everyone's gonna be comfortable with opening their door or the garage door for a complete stranger, but this is really just to showcase the potential of a smart home and what you can do. Possibly, I would recommend doing this maybe if it's a known person. Now, the brains of the system is Home Assistant, an automation platform can link more than a thousand smart devices. To get started with Home Assistant, if you're totally new, check the link down in the description below for a free Home Assistant course. Now, as you can see from this diagram, hopefully I'm trying to represent what's happening behind the scenes. So we've got a person coming in, and they're ringing that doorbell and they want to deliver something to us, but we're actually too busy and we can't go downstairs. So what we can do is we get that notification on our phone, we can tap it and open up the garage door. We also have a video stream, an IP camera in there, that we can actually watch what's going on and we can record it in case something weird goes on or something goes missing. But normally, they will just put the parcel there. We also have a voice assistant right there that will give them a beautiful message, like, thank you for delivering this parcel, see you next time. So give them a bit more of context of what's going on. And once they leave, we can see that from home assistant they've left, and we can then close the garage door ourselves and collect the parcel. And now I'm gonna show you what devices you actually need to get this all done. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a shopping list here for you. And the beauty of Home Assistant is that you have got a lot of options and you can pick and choose. So I've got them here in a kit. And this kit, you'll see, you're seeing right here, you'll find a link down in the description. So let's have a look at it. It's called Never Miss a Parcel. And I've got a few doorbells here. You obviously only need one. I have Nest Hello, but I'm not going to recommend that for this use case because it is a bit cumbersome to set up. And once you've got it set up, it works okay, but it's a little bit difficult, especially if you're new. So maybe try and have a look at the other ones. You can go to the Home Assistant integration page over here and you can find out more information about each device before you purchase it. If you have any questions about any other device, you can ping me a comment down in the description below. I can certainly help you out a lot with Nest if you're going to get that. Moving on in terms of the opening the garage door, you can either use a, a MyQ system, which is quite famous and many people maybe already have it, and you can purchase that and you can get one of those over there if you, have, if you haven't got it. Or you can use one of these Shelly One devices and these are very little, nice Wi-Fi devices that cost maybe $15 and you can connect them up. You're gonna to need to know a little bit about electricity or get an electrician to do it. But once you've done it, it's, it's very simple to use. It's just basically a switch and you can use a mobile phone to turn on or turn off and you can use Home Assistant too. And at the end, the media player that I'm using is the Nest Mini or Google Mini or whatever we're gonna call it. And you can get that from the Google website. That is very important that if you do decide to do this, that you have some actual CCTV within the garage, actually see what's going on and try to store that somewhere safe. I'm using an Anki 4 megapixel with night vision, power over ethernet security camera. Now the guys at Anki, I thank you guys for sending me one of these to actually get this project done. Subscribe to the channel for a full review of the Anki security camera coming up soon. So before we get started, a couple of things you need to check if you've done or not. First of all, download the mobile app for Home Assistant. It's completely free. Get that all installed and enable notifications. So I'm going to assume that all of the devices have already been integrated. So if you've got a Ring doorbell, Nest doorbell, or you're using Google Mini or whatever device you're using to achieve this automation, you've already integrated them. Right, now we're in Home Assistant, we're going to need to access the configuration files. To do that, I'm using an add-on called File Editor. If you haven't got that add-on, add it in first. Now click on File Editor and go to your configuration.yaml. 
Now, this is very straightforward. Just take the code that you will find in my blog. There's a link in the description down below. Take that code, copy it and paste it in here. Ensure that the first part, for example, I'm using an iOS device to achieve this. So remember that your iOS needs to be, there are no spaces before iOS. Now iOS, this is because this specific setup that I'm showing you here is done on an iPhone. So I'll leave another link in the description below for Android users, but it's pretty much similar. But because I haven't got an Android device, I can't try it out. Now, what this does, this is actually giving us that button that we're going to see or that we see during that notification. And now, as soon as you make a change, you'll have this big save button. Remember to save it. You'll have your nice file saved successfully. Look for your green mark and go for your settings and click restart has. Actually, instead of restarting has, we need to restart the whole Home Assistant server when we do these sort of changes. So let's do that now. So once that's reloaded, get your mobile phone, close the app down, reopen the app, and go into app configuration, right? And you should see somewhere here, I'm not sure if this is focusing or not, you'll have notifications and you'll have synced categories. And that's what you need to look for. And if you see doorbell, then we're good. Now we need to add that little image that was in the notification, if you guys remember. And that image is a snapshot from one of the cameras. So I'll show you how we achieve that right now. Okay, cool. So we're inside the file editor here. We've got this new folder button. Click new folder and put www and then just click OK. All right. So I've already got that. So I'm not going to do it now. And you can see in here, this is what you're going to need. In here, you'll find files. For example, video files, MP4 files, and those are the recordings. And also you'll see images, the still images, for example, this image over here. Now this is done, we can move on to the next step. Now go into your configuration.yaml and check that you have this line over here with stream, right? If you haven't got it, just pack that in, put that in anywhere. But just check if you have it. If you have it, it's fine. If you haven't, then save and restart has. All right, now it's the exciting part. We're going to create the automation to make this all happen. First automation is starts when someone presses the doorbell. That's our trigger point. So now we're in Home Assistant. Let's build an automation. Let's go to Configuration, Automations. And here you can see here, I have the two automations that I used to achieve this. Now I'm going to go to this pencil of here to edit it, but you would click add automation, right? We'll get to the same screen. So now we're here, give your uh, automation a name. The description is optional. And let's go down and going to need to pick device in terms of your trigger type. And my device is the front door. So this is the next hello that I have installed. And I've got four trigger points, as you can see. I have the person detected, sound detected, motion detected, and doorbell detected. So we will click on doorbell pressed. Let's go down, let's go keep going. Okay, so we're in the actions. We want to record, and we want to save the recording onto a file. And what I'm, I'm doing that by doing, writing these five lines of code, again, be in the block. You can actually copy the whole code from the blog and just copy and paste and get it run, up running in a few minutes. So, but I'm explaining this to you so it's for your understanding. What we're doing is we're recording and we're recording the front door, which is the entity, and the file name, and this is where we are storing the actual um, clips. And they're stored on the configuration, www, and then this is the name I've given it, so front door uh, pressed or whatever. And then this string over here is a, is a timestamp, it's a date timestamp. You don't need to touch this, basically. You can leave this as is if you're following the video. The duration is what something that you might want to change. This is going to be how many seconds and the clip is, you know, is, is, is going to hold. So in this case, we're going for two minutes from the moment that someone rings that doorbell. The second thing we're doing, we're also creating a snapshot in here in the same folder and 
we've got a JPEG, we've given the JPEG a name, okay? And we're still using the front door. Now, the second part of the automation, we're using the action type call service, and we're using our mobile apps uh, notifications. This is gonna notify my iMac, which is right here. So I've got a simple message, someone's at the front door. Now, this is where the magic is going to happen. In the notification that we're sending the iPhone, we're looking, we're going to send them a simple message, for example, someone's at the front door. And this is the little structure you're going to need to do, and you can copy and paste it, feel free. The only thing you're going to need to change is your IP address over here. When I've got IP ADDRS, you need to take that out and put in for example, if you're using your Nabu Casa, you can keep this all in. Or if you're using another type of external IP, you can uh, get that sorted. If you're not sure what Nabu Casa is, I've got a video here that explains that for you. Now, local is going to be is a, quite important, and this is where you're storing your file. So the local folder is the www folder. So don't get confused. Local is www. Okay. So you need to call the folder www in Home Assistant, and here you need to reference it as local. And this is the name of the image. So this name here will be whatever name you set uh, in this stage, okay? Last, last but not least is that push category. And that push category is what we defined at the beginning when we were looking at that doorbell. And you just leave that as it is unless you change names around. Now you can give this a save and we're all good. To test the automation, you can easily do that by executing but actually the better thing is just to go down there and just try that doorbell so today's sponsor is my own course how to build a smart home with home assistant and this is actually me rebuilding my home smart home from scratch and this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide from planning to buying to installing configuring and also creating all these automation that i'm showing you here on youtube now grant this course is going to be in pre-order it's still in pre-order it's going to be pre-order until it launches and it's going to launch in arch 2021 so get it at a reduced price currently 180 pounds so you can get that but it will be going up and there's more than 95 i think 96 lessons i'm sure we're going to go over 100 by the time i finish then adding in everything i'm going step by step controlling lights heating surveillance system nabu cars and media player garage doors you can see the list right and i'm trying to get as much as done possible in one course for you so let's carry on now with the automations now all of the automation that you actually create in the ui or user interface you can also find the code behind the scenes and i'll show you where you can find it if you go to the file editor and you can see here we have an automation.yaml file and i'll show you it's in the browse file system click on automation.yaml file and in here you have your whole list of automations and you can split your automations up but that's a little bit more advanced if you're just starting out just leave it as it is and in here you can create automations for example you can copy and paste them from other sources like my blog for example without actually having to create them from the ui i'm going to show you how you can do that now now for the purpose of this video i'm going to show you on a file editor just because it just looks a bit better but you would actually need to put it in this automation.yaml file, save, and then you would go over here and you would go and click reload automations and you go, yes, and you get that confirmed. So let's jump into the file editor. So this could be a lot easier to see, visualize, and you have all the right syntax. You would just simply take it, copy it, paste it, and, and, and you're good, right? Okay, so let's talk about this automation now. The alias is the open garage door for delivery. That's the name of the automation. I'm using the event and the event is triggered when I'm using my iOS device and I'm tapping that button uh, open garage door. That's what's going to trigger this automation. And the action name is specifically open garage door. Now that is going to be exactly the same as the one we have in the configuration at YAML. But you don't need to worry about it because if you haven't changed anything, you can just use it as it is. We're doing something very similar here with the recording like we did before with the front door. In this example, we're using an Anki video camera to actually store the footage. And 
this is how you should set it up. It's very similar. The only few things you, you will change is the name of the entity of your um, camera and then just give it a different name, right? And keep everything as it is. I'm still keeping two minutes, right? So we're all good. Next thing we're going to do, and this part over here, is we're going to actually turn on the garage door, or open the garage door. But it's turning on a switch, and the switch, and that Shelly One device, is going to turn on that garage door. More details about that at the end of the video, right? So don't worry about that. Now, delay is going to be something that we need because by the time, the time that the garage door opens up, roughly let's say 30 seconds, then I want the next step to be executed. Then the last part of the automation, I'm using something called TTS, which is text-to-speech. Text-to-speech is going to enable me to use a speaker, for example, like a Google Mini, make it say something, make it say words. My example, my message is, hello, please leave the pass on the floor, okay? So you can see that's all configured there. And I'm using Nabucaz's text-to-speech service, as you can see here. But you can also use it with the Google's, Google's own service. But because I'm already paying for the Nabucaz subscription, and I'm using it for various other reasons, so many reasons. And so I'm just going to simply use text-to-speech, and it works, very, works really fine. And I can specify, for example, agenda or of the, um, the person talking and the uh, language, or say the accent. So in my example, English, GB, Great Britain, right? You could obviously create one automation as soon as the doorbell presses, the garage door opens, but I don't think you really want to do that, right? But, you know, you can do it with hypothesis, right? So as promised, I've got two videos to leave you with. A garage automation video, which you can look at how I'm automating my garage door. And another video where you can look at the DIY alarm solution. I'll see you in the next one. As usual, before you leave, subscribe and like and check the links down in the description below to support the channel. See ya!